Hey friends, this will be episode zero, as in just in the introduction of the, a series of videos I'm, I'm going to start called uh, ASP.NET Core from zero to overkill. So usually I go straight into more complex things, but I thought maybe it, it would be a nice idea to start from, from scratch like going for a, a complete project, start from simple, intro introduce the, the various uh, themes on the ASP.NET Core and uh, learn along the way and complicate things uh, as we go on. Uh, I'm saying it's ASP.NET Core, but it's not 100% ASP.NET Core. It will, of course, have the usual stuff like uh, JavaScript front-ends and databases but then I'll add even more stuff different technologies but at the, at the core of the project will be ASP.NET Core that's why I, I gave it this name but it, it will have other things so I am assuming C-sharp understanding but uh, feel free to ask questions on the language or some things I do and question if I do it correctly it's very possible I'm doing something wrong but feel free and if uh, it adds value please ask and I I'll add those kinds of things of explanations regarding C sharp and .NET uh, to the videos not just ASP.NET and building the application so as I'm saying I'll be build a complete application starting from scratch and slowly with simple stuff and then complicated complicating it and that's why I say overkill because to go into some into some subjects I'll probably overcomplicate and over engineer stuff just for the sake of seeing everything working together probably the project would be v much simpler if I didn't want to use every piece of technology that I want to use. So as a reference project, uh, I'll be creating an application that handles organi organizing sports events between friends, keeping stats and some other features we'll discuss along the way. I'll try not to make it focus on football or soccer for our US friends, which was my initial idea, but We'll see along the way how hard it is to make something like this generic because uh, I didn't really plan this all very much. I just had the idea and I'll go with that. So normally these kinds of courses, if you will, this is not really a course, but a series of videos on, on a topic, eh, kind of a course, but whatever. Uh, normally do blogs and note applications and shopping applications but that's all there is that's used so I wanted to give it a twist eventually talking about some things that are exactly the same but in a different context just to to, to have something different instead of the same examples over and over again so like I said, the result will probably probably be over-engineered, but no problem, it's, it's on purpose just to see all the concepts. So the page you're seeing here is uh, an organization I created to host the projects, to aggregate them. I was thinking of putting them all in the same repository, but it would eventually be too big and cause other problems like in CI/CD pipelines, which I will talk about. So I ended up creating an organization and will be adding the, the projects over here. And it's easier to find, it's easy to find, not as easy as uh, downloading a repo with everything over there, but it's easy to find and download each repo individually. So, yeah, like I said, the first videos will be simple, probably like the basics of ASP.NET Core and starting the applications and stuff like that and we'll get more complex as we introduce more more topics more advanced topics 
I want to take to use this video also to talk about the tools I'll be using. The main ones, probably I'll introduce other tools along the way, but these are the main ones. So I'll start using .NET Core 2.1, which is the current stable version, although it's there's a, already a, a beta of 2.2, but I'll start with 2.1 and we'll upgrade along the way because probably during this series, ASP.NET and .NET Core will see new versions. If this, this series goes as planned, it will last a bit. So you can download it from here and install depending on your operating system. Right now I'm on a Mac, but I will try to make videos on Mac, Linux and Windows just because we can, because it's .NET Core and it's cross-platform. I could do it in a single one, but I'll go all out and use them all. Right now I'm on Mac, will probably be where I'll spend more time, but yeah. So you can download .NET from here, or you could also install it with package managers, like in the Mac, you can use Homebrew to install via uh, command line. On Windows, you could use Chocolaty, and on Linux, probably apt-get if on on a debian based system on and other package managers that exist for other linux distributions so this is the base stuff then as a ide on the mac i will most of the time use jetbrains rider uh, and on linux probably i will use this as well uh, this unfortunately is not free unless you have an open source or a student account. Uh, on Windows, when I use Windows, I'll probably use Visual Studio 2017, although I could also use Rider, but just to add more things to the mix. Uh, on the Mac, you could use the uh, Visual Studio for Mac, which is free. I, I haven't tried it that much, so I don't know if it's very good. If you think it's good, drop a comment so other people will know. And Visual Studio Code also works. I was working mostly with Visual Studio Code previously. At work, I use Visual Studio full, but at pet projects, I was using Visual Studio Code. So it works, just as a bit less, less bells and whistles but it works really well as well. For non-C Sharp stuff, I'll also use Visual Studio Code for uh, front ends and probably other text editing things like editing Docker files, stuff like that. And talking about it, I'll use Docker for starters only for supporting stuff like databases and things like that, because it's easier instead of installing everything on, on on the machine, it's easier to have Docker and install the, and run the containers we need when we need them. And then when you don't need them anymore, it's easier to to delete them than having to go and un uninstall all that databases and uh, Redis and all that kind of things. It's easier this way. But uh, in the future, eventually we'll get to using really Docker and putting the application in Docker and orchestrating all the things with Docker and other tools. I'll use, of course, Git for source control. The, the project will be public on GitHub in the organization I showed you. When not using Git from the command line, I'll use Git Kraken, probably, or Git extensions when I'm on Windows. Git Kraken works across all platforms, but I'm more used to Git extensions. So when on Windows, I'll take advantage of that. And I will also be trying Sublime Merge, which is a, a recent tool from the guys of, of Sublime Text for for Git. I'll probably give it a go because they say it's good for for merging and the conflicts. So I'll probably give it a go. Other tools. I've been talking about it and then I have the links here but I have been looking at the other screen and not. So Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, 
Docker, Git Kraken. I'll drop the links in the in the description so you can check out everything. Git extensions, Sublime Merge, then as usual we'll be creating some web APIs and I'll use Postman to to test them. There are other alternatives, but again, I'm used to Postman. And when on the command line, on Mac, I use iTerm2, but the usual terminal would, would also work. On Windows, I use Commander, just to add some, some extras to the Windows command line. I normally don't use PowerShell, because I'm not used to it. I probably should learn a bit more. I normally use the 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 old school command line and commander to add some features on top of it we'll see what's what what i'll use in this project uh, if you want bash on windows you can also go with the wsl windows subsystem for linux from what i've tested not that much it seemed to work okay but other people use it a lot and say it's it's awesome, so it's an alternative if you prefer to use Bash even when on Windows. And on Linux, the default terminal will do the trick, unless I, along the way I, I found something that annoys me and installed something besides that. Let me just check my sheet sheet, and I think it's all. So I'll try to, to do the best I can on these explanations. If something needs needs a better explanation please please comment and ask or hit me on twitter or make pull requests open issues on the on the projects please <laughs> and uh i think that's it feedback is more than welcome as it can improve the series and if something at the beginning is failing i and i have feedback I'll try to improve it along the way. So thanks for for watching and stay tuned for the next one. Bye.